power generation module. It weighs 500,000 pounds and will be worth tens of thousands of dollars as scrap metal. It's also home to an ingenious engineering innovation, which I want to uncover. It so happens that natural gas is a normal byproduct of pumping oil. It gets brought to the surface with the oil where it's separated away, and for years was burned off as waste. But in the 1990s, Brent engineers realized natural gas was the power source they needed if they could figure out a way to harness it. All the engineers needed was an engine that could run on it, compact enough to fit on the oil rig, but powerful enough to keep the entire platform running. And for that, they looked to the skies. The electric lightning was a Cold War fighter jet used by air forces around the world in the 50s and 60s. It had two Avon jet engines, which provided so much thrust, the lightning could fly at twice the speed of sound. Pilots described flying in it like being saddled to a skyrocket. I've come to this overhaul facility in Scotland to see one up close. The basic design is classic jet engine. These blades will suck air in here, and that air is compressed in this section. The compressed air is mixed with aviation fuel and then ignited inside the combustion chamber. Hot exhaust gas will blast out of here at 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, creating 26,000 horsepower. The Brent Delta engineer's ingenious solution was to install three of these jet engines and use them to run the rig's generators. All they had to do was modify the engines to run on gas instead of jet fuel. Then they directed that blast of hot exhaust gas into a turbine connected to the generator and that way produced the 36 megawatts of power the rig needed every day. Since then, the Avon engine has become an oil industry standard. 700 are still in use on oil rigs today, and many get sent to this facility to be overhauled. I'm helping install new compressor blades on this one before it's put back into service. So we're working on reassembling this overhauled engine, and right now it's in the vertical position and the inlet's at the bottom. So essentially the air would come up through here and it goes through each of these stages of this giant compressor section. It's gonna be compressed more and more until at the top it's gonna to be mixed with fuel and then ignited in the combustion chamber. Believe it or not, this engine is 30 years old. It's already had 150,000 hours of service. And after this major overhaul that we're giving it, it's gonna be good for another 30,000 hours. Considering that this engine has been out in the North Sea on an oil rig for all these years, and it looks this good and still continues to work, it speaks volumes to the design and the engineering that's gone into it. 